March Madness is here and Mike Schmitz is here to pick every game in the tournament. I'm Victoria Arlen and Mike, before we start, you're a draft expert. Which one NBA prospect is going to take over this tournament? I'm watching Keegan Murray out of mm-hmm. Iowa. He's top five in the country in scoring. Average just seven points a game last year. One of the most improved players. I think he has a chance to lead Iowa to the Final Four and solidify his status as a top five pick. So we're going we're gonna to first start off in the West, Gonzaga versus Georgia State. Who's your pick? And I'm going to let you take it from there. Gonzaga, no brainer. Okay. I think they're going to go deep. We'll, we'll get into that. Mm-hmm. Memphis, Boise State. I think this will have a little bit of back and forth, but Jalen Duran, too physical, too explosive for Boise State. I've got Memphis there. UConn, New Mexico State. I'm going to roll with UConn. They have a bunch of veterans, a well-coached team. I think they're going to roll. Arkansas, Vermont. I'm going to roll with Arkansas here. They play an up-tempo pace. They have a lot of scoring in the backcourt, and that usually wins in March. Alabama is going to roll over. I think Notre Dame wins the play-in game, but Alabama is going to beat Notre Dame because of the guard play and that offensive, high-octane offense that they have. Mm -hmm. Texas Tech, Montana State, I'm rolling with Texas Tech. Veteran group, they've been successful year after year. Now, here's a little bit of an upset. 7-10 but a little bit of an upset Davidson over Michigan state young, young Lee. That's a name to watch. Okay. So we know okay. the Davidson program is successful, but young, young Lee has turned himself <laughs> into an NBA prospect. Six, eight can really, really shoot the ball. And then lastly, Duke Cal state Fullerton. We're going to go with Duke five potential yeah. first round picks. Not, not, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Well in the second round, who wins in the second round? I think Gonzaga is going to be in a dogfight with Memphis. And that's the matchup every NBA scout is looking for because you have Chet Holmgren versus Jalen Duran. A contrast in styles. Duran, really physical, explosive. Chet, very skilled. But Gonzaga, I think, squeaks it out there against Memphis. Um, UConn, Arkansas, another dogfight. You know, you have veteran groups um, who can really, really score the ball. I'm going to roll with UConn uh, over Arkansas. Hurley versus Musselman. Uh, that'll be a fun one. And then Alabama, Texas Tech. I like Alabama. You know, Nate Oates has a lot of experience coaching in big games. Um, they can beat you in a lot of different ways. Guard play is the name of the game in March, and they have exactly that. Uh, and then Davidson Duke. I think Davidson's going to give them a little bit of a push just because they have a great system. Um, yeah. Coach has been there a long time and Bob McKillop, but Coach K's last year can't bet against the Blue Devils in no. the second round there. So I'm going to roll with Duke. Okay. Okay. I I'm with you with the Duke part. Uh, all right. Onto the sweet 16, any shockers to be expected? Not a lot of shockers. Well, Gonzaga, UConn, that's, you know, maybe maybe a close game. I'm still going to roll with Gonzaga. I think they have too much firepower. They're built like an NBA team. Mark few has done it year after year. I'm going to take Alabama over Duke. Okay. So keep in mind a little bit of a surprise, but keep in mind, this is a Duke team that's still incredibly young. You know, you have Paulo Bancaro is a freshman. Uh, A.J. Griffin, one of the youngest players in the country, still 18 years old. Mark Williams, a sophomore. Trevor Keels, a freshman. Whereas Alabama, Keon Ellis, Jaden Shackelford, um, you know, he's a freshman, but J.D. Davison is explosive. So I'm going to take Alabama in that up-tempo, high-octane high offense to edge out Duke in the five potential first-round picks. Okay, so now to the Elite Eight. We've got Gonzaga and Alabama. Who moves on to the final four? Well, this is a rematch because these two yeah. played earlier in the year in Seattle. I was actually at that game and Alabama beat Gonzaga. So they're battle tested. They've had some big matchups oh. and they've played up to their competition at times. But I think Gonzaga's had that potential matchup circled and they just have too much. When you talk about Drew Timmy, Andrew Nemhard, and yeah. the projected number one pick, Chet Holmgren. I'm going to go with Gonzaga. Okay, thank God, because I was starting to panic about my uh, my bracket. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to the East region, Baylor, Norfolk State. Who do you got? Baylor. Baylor rolls. Baylor. That's that's an easy one. Norfolk State, no offense, but, you know, Baylor's got some experience. Uh, Marquette, North Carolina. I'm going to go with Marquette. Shaka Smart okay. has those guys playing hard. They have a veteran in Daryl Morsell in the backcourt. Justin Lewis is a potential first-round pick. Um, so I'm going to go with Marquette edging out. North Carolina. And then here's my upset. One of my favorite upsets of this region. We're going to go with Wyoming to beat Indiana in the playing game. And then Wyoming over St. Mary's in the first round. So 
Wyoming, Laramie, Wyoming, you've maybe never been there yet. It's snowy, but they can really play basketball. Okay. They have Hunter Maldonado, one of the most underrated guards in the country and Graham EK, 19 years old, physical presence inside. They're well coached. I think they knock off another well coached team in St. Mary's. Uh, then we're going to go UCLA over Akron. That group is too deep. They've been yeah. there before Mick Cronin. He can coach and they've got a lot of depth there in that starting lineup. Virginia Tech, we're going to take Virginia Tech over Texas. They're rolling. They just won the ACC tournament, knocked off Duke. They have shot makers. They're playing very much together right now. I like them over Texas. Um, Purdue, they're going to beat Yale. This is a high-octane offense, top three offense in the entire country. Jaden Ivey is a star in the backcourt. They have size. They have speed. They can beat you in a lot of different ways. Now, Murray State versus San Francisco. This is one of the best matchups. I think in the first round, um, I'm going to go with Murray state because I think they have the best player. His name is Tevin Brown averages yeah. 17, 18 points a game. He's the most efficient off screen scorer in college basketball. So USF Todd golden, they've done a great job, but I'm going to give the edge to Murray state and then Kentucky St. Peter's, you know, I, I just don't see it. We're, we're, we're rolling with coach Cal uh, yeah. over St. Peter's. Is it, I mean, that's just formality right there. Kind I of. All right. I think it's March. So, who knows? Yeah, it is March. All right. Let's get to the second round. Talk to me about that. Baylor. So, Baylor Marquette, I think, is, is going to be a battle, but I'm still going to roll with Baylor. Jeremy Baylor. Sohan is a freshman that NBA teams like a lot. And I think he gives them a versatility they don't have otherwise. And Wyoming, UCLA, I think it's a battle, but I'm going to go with UCLA. Johnny Juzang, Jules Bernard, Jaime mm -hmm. Jaquez, they got a lot of talent there. Um, Virginia Tech Purdue, I think, will also be a battle, but Jaden Ivey, Zach Eady, Matt Painter, experienced head coach. I'm going to go with Purdue there. Murray State, Kentucky, I'm going with Murray State. Uh, I'm, I'm going with the upset here. We're going to take – I know. John Morant's going to be fired up. Uh, yeah. You know, head coach Matt McMahon has done a great job with that group year after year. You hear his name in bit for big coaching job, you know, year after year. And I think Tevin Brown – that offense, um, too much to handle for Kentucky. I think Kentucky's on upset alert there against Murray State. Oh, I'm I'm all for that. I'm absolutely all for that. Okay, let's get to the Sweet 16. Are there any more shockers here? A little bit of chalk here, unfortunately, for, yeah. for the fans at home. We're going to go with UCLA. Well, I guess the one seed losing to the four seed is a little bit of an upset. Uh, I'm going to take UCLA over Baylor. Baylor a little bit banged up. You know, they're missing kind of the heart and soul of their team in JTT inside. I'm going to go with yep. the Bruins there. Um, their experience, like I said, and I think they're going to be a tough out. And then we're going to take Purdue as well. Okay. The, yeah. Murray State, the, the dreams are over. I'm sorry. Darn. Darn. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get to the Elite Eight. Who moves on to the Final Four here? I was going the Cinderella story with Murray State, but okay. We're doing UCLA. Uh, we're, yeah. we're going to keep going okay. with the Bruins. This team was so close last year. Uh, and, you know, when you have five starters basically returning, Tiger Campbell, I think, is the most underrated point guard in the country. Um, so they're they're ready for this moment. And, and I think that they're going to knock off Purdue. Um, Purdue is a great offensive team, but they've had some struggles defensively. And I think UCLA uh, edges them out there. All right. Well, let's get to the South. Arizona versus the play-in winner. Are we going to see an upset or not so much? I don't think so. Uh, I think Arizona is clicking on all cylinders. Um, they had some injuries, but I think Arizona rolls. Now, TCU Seton Hall, that's a, that's a game that, you know, a lot of people will be watching, NBA scouts will be watching. Mike Miles is a name to know there. He's an explosive guard who can really, really score the ball. Uh, and I think Mike Miles, Jamie Dixon, they have some great role players there. I think they're too much for Seton Hall and they advance. Um, Houston, Kelvin Sampson, He's done it year after year. Um, they have some bets. They're an athletic team. You know, they've always hung their hat defensively. I'm going to roll with Houston. Chattanooga. We're taking Chattanooga to knock off the Illini. I apologize, Kofi Coburn and, and the rest of the gang. Um, Chattanooga. Oh, I'm taking some, Chattanooga. Yes. I'm taking Chattanooga. They, they, they've had some big moments this year, and I think they're – a little bit of a Cinderella um, through this first round. And Illinois has, has been very up and down. You know, they lost to Indiana at the Big Ten tournament. Um, we're rolling with Chattanooga. Now, here's my favorite upset in this part of the bracket. And we're going to see they're going to go a little deeper than people think. Colorado State, okay? I know they're a six seed and they were top 25, but the Mountain West is knocking off the Big Ten, David no. Roddy. And David Roddy's the guy to know. 6'6", oh. six, six, 260, looks like a tight end but he happens to be a potential first round pick as well. So I'm taking yeah. Colorado state, um, Tennessee over Longwood. I think they roll o Ohio state. 
Loyola Chicago, the magic of Loyola Chicago is back. Ohio State, I thought they struggled at the Big Ten tournament. I was out there watching EJ Liddell and Malachi Branham. I think Loyola Chicago is going to knock off Ohio State in advance. And then Villanova knocks off Delaware. Knocks off Delaware. Okay, so we got one Cinderella story in there. Let's get to the second round, though. Talk to me about that. Arizona TCU, again, I think this is going to be a dogfight. You know, Jamie Dixon, great coach, but Tommy Lloyd, the chemistry that they have, I think it's too much. They're playing a pro style, and they have that empowering offense where guys want to share the ball, and they're going to keep, keep rolling. Houston, we have them taking care of Chattanooga. It was a fun little run, Chattanooga, but I'm sorry. Your, your, your time is over. Now, Colorado State, Tennessee. I'm taking Colorado State, and I mentioned David Roddy, but they have more than man. that. <laughs> yeah, we're rolling, we're, we're, rolling with the, we're rolling with Colorado State, Mountain West. Um, yep. It's not just David Roddy with this team. They have Isaiah Stevens, who's a very dynamic point guard, really quick off the dribble. They have a balanced attack, really well coached. They've been in big games already this year. So I'm taking Colorado State over Tennessee. Loyola Chicago against Villanova. We're, we got we to go with Villanova here. Colin yeah. Gillespie in the backcourt, shooting what feels like 100% from three so far this season. Jay Wright, mm-hmm. you can't bet against him. Villanova advances. All right. Well, let's get to the sweet 16. There's already some shockers. So what else are we going to see here? Arizona is going to beat Houston. Um, yeah. We're taking care of that one. I, we, I do have my own Kerr crease of their starting point guard. He's been out with an ankle injury. They're going to need him back. I think to go mm-hmm. as deep as we all think that they can. Um, so keep an eye on that, but I think they can take care of Houston, Colorado state. We're still rolling. We're, we're still we're, rolling. We're still rolling. The dream okay. continues. Okay. David Roddy, he's a mismatch nightmare, shoots 45% from three. He can handle, he can pass. Isaiah Stevens, that's a great offensive attack with those two. They play modern basketball. I think they're going to knock off Villanova. I'm like, let's go altitude. That training is next level. All right. So now we're going Elite Eight. Who's going to move on? I think that the dream's over for our guys, David Roddy. They, you know, they did they did a great job to get to this point, yeah. but it's tough when you run into Christian Coloco. I, I think he's the best shot blocker and in the, in the, arguably the best shot blocker in the country up there with Walker Kessler of Auburn and Mark Williams of, of Duke. Roddy does some of his damage inside with his physicality. And then you see a seven, six wingspan. It, it becomes a little more difficult. So Arizona advances, knocks yeah. off Colorado State. I had a little hope, but that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We're going we're gonna to move on to the Midwest, shall we? We got Kansas taking on the play-in winner. Who wins there? So we're going to go with Kansas. Oshai yeah. Agbaji, Christian Brown, too much to handle. Now, San Diego State, Creighton. I think this is a really interesting matchup to watch. San Diego State has been so good defensively. Creighton plays a really free-flowing style. Uh, I'm going to go with Creighton here. Powered by freshman Arthur Kaluma is a name to know. Um, he actually plays for me in the in the Uganda national team. Um, oh, nice. So he's, he's got a bright future. He's going to play in the NBA for a long time. Actually, his brother is Adam Seiko. He plays for San Diego State. So I know their mother is going to be very conflicted on, on what's doing <laughs> there. Um, but I, I'm taking Creighton in that one. And mm-hmm. Iowa, Richmond, I think that's an interesting matchup just because Richmond does have some firepower. Tyler Burton is a name that NBA scouts have been watching. But I've got Iowa in this one. Love the way they play. Top five offense. Keegan Murray's a stud. Um, Providence, South Dakota State. This is an upset. South Dakota State, Baylor Shireman. That's a name that people are going to know by the end of this tournament. 6'6", six, yep. six, lefty. Think of it like Joe Ingles type of player. Really, really skilled. He's got the t-shirt and the headband and the floppy hair, but don't misread that because he can really play. So South Dakota State going to knock them off. Then we got Iowa State knocking off the now Will Wade-less LSU Tigers. Um, we've got Wisconsin advancing against Colgate. Miami USC. This is an interesting matchup when you look at um, you know, Evan or Isaiah Mobley out of USC, Boogie Ellis. Uh, I'm going to go with USC here to advance. Um, I think that they can beat you in more ways than Miami. And then Auburn, potential number one pick, Jabari Smith, guards who can fill it up. We're going yeah. with Auburn. All right, let's get to the second round here. No major upsets at the top. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go with Kansas over Creighton. Okay. Big time school, well coached. Creighton, I think, fights, but. Ryan Nemhard's out for the year with an injury. He's their starting point guard. That might catch up to them. We're going to go with Creighton. Iowa South Dakota State. I think this is a battle because of Baylor Shireman, like we talked about. But Keegan Murray, Chris Murray, don't sleep on Chris Murray, his twin, who can also really play. I think they advance. Um, Wisconsin and Johnny Davis, I think they're going to be too much for Iowa State. They were picked 10th to start the year in their conference. And then they ended up winning the whole conference. And now here they are, a three seed. So we're going with Wisconsin. And then we're going to take Auburn to beat 
USC to advance. All right, well, let's get to the Sweet 16. How sweet is this round going to be? It's a sweet one, and, and, and it starts with those Murray twins. I keep talking about it, but they are going to beat Kansas. I think that that team is too good. They can play five out. They can spread you out. They share the ball. They shoot the three. I watched them go on a run live in Indianapolis from the Big Ten tournament and was just really impressed with their cohesion. Um, they're playing for each other. And again, they have maybe the best player in the country in Keegan Murray. So I have them beating Kansas. Uh, Wisconsin-Auburn, I think, is going to be a fight as well. But I'm going to go with Auburn. I'm going to go with Bruce Pearl, Jabari Smith. Again, the potential number one pick. Going to be too much for Johnny Davis in Wisconsin. Oh, I like the upset with Kansas. All right. We got the Elite Eight. We got Iowa-Auburn. Who's making it to the Final Four? We're rolling with Iowa. We're still rolling with Iowa because of that offense, because of the way they play. They can beat you in a lot of different ways. Um, That's going to be a big-time matchup when you look at Jabari Smith and Keegan Murray, those guys, both potential top five picks. They play a similar position as well. Uh, So I think that's a chance for Keegan to show that he belongs in that draft elite. Um, But I think Iowa, their their togetherness is going to win out because Auburn, they can be a little wild with those guards living off a lot of tough shots. Um, Mm -hmm. Whereas Iowa, they got that thing moving right now. All right. So we got the final four set game set match here. We got Arizona, Iowa, Gonzaga, UCLA. Who's going to the big game? All right. I'm going with Arizona to knock off Iowa. I, I just think that their size, Iowa plays fast, but Arizona yep. with Coloco, Omar Ballo, he's a big body. They can play those guys together. Dalen Terry, another name to watch as we get through March. I think they beat Iowa. On the other side, I think we got Gonzaga knocking off UCLA. Okay. Um, they've already played this year. Uh, they, they, they're familiar with each other, but I just think Gonzaga is, is too much with Timmy yep. Nemhard and Chet Holmgren. And then the battle everyone's been looking for, Mark Few against Tommy Lloyd. Tom, if anyone knows all of Gonzaga's tricks, it's Tommy Lloyd. And I'm going to take Arizona to beat Gonzaga and win yes. the national championship. We're going to call it, we're going to call it 81 to 73, Arizona. Okay. I love it. National champion. My bracket is completely busted. That is that. <laughs> 